Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Simon. Today, I will show you how to upgrade the remote control of your Altair Lite or Nano so that it not only has the function of using a super large screen, but also has a strong anti-interference ability and doubles the distance expansion. This is an unmodified Altair Lite controller in my hand. Fits an excellent remote with a small footprint. However, it does not appear to be capable of meeting the needs of some professional users. For example, its screen clamps appear to only fit phones. Some users require a larger screen to see more details in real time while the drone is flying, as well as more accurate drone shooting. It's a tablet stand with an adapter that we created specifically for Altel LITRC. We'll reveal the secret here first, and I will unpack this packet later. This is a new Alien Tech product, so I will set it aside first. On my desk, there is also an Alien Tech DOI antenna booster, which is a high gain external antenna with a power amplifier circuit. It can be mounted on a modified RC, such as this one. As always, let me introduce the tools we'll be using before we begin a flathead screwdriver, a tweezers, a T6 star screwdriver a ring knife, and a Phillips screwdriver are included. Let's put them aside for now. These are the joysticks and the remote control accessories. Let me begin. As previously stated, its design is very compact, with no screw holes on the outside. It even makes you feel as if getting started is impossible. I wrapped the flat blade screwdriver's blade in tape to avoid leaving knot marks when prying the remote off. We'll begin here, based on our research. Insert a flat head screwdriver, about 1 to million into the gap here. After that, the outer rubber grip can be pried off. Don't worry here, this rubber handle is not fixed by screws, it is fixed by internal snaps. Moreover, the rubber material is not easy to leave knock marks. But you still need to be careful how hard you apply, slowly try to pry it open, and try different positions. You want to avoid using too much force, which may fracture the internal bayonet. Excellent, I took it apart and so that all the bayonets are intact. Okay, let me go back to prying off the handle on the other side. Also, follow the method apply force evenly, and try in multiple positions. Okay, I've pried off the rubber grip on the other side. Let me check it out, it's excellent. All of their internal bayonets are intact. Let me put them away first. Next, let's pry off the cover of RC. It is also secured with internal bayonets, with no screws. I found a place to pry it off quickly. In the same way, use a flathead screwdriver to pry it open from multiple positions slowly. Avoid excessive force, which may cause the internal bayonet to break. Great, I got it. It's perfect without any damage. Next, I'm going to open the structural face shell of RC. There are 10 star socket screws that need to be removed. We're going to use a second tool, a T6 star screwdriver. Without any difficulty, I took them all down in no time.
Next, I still use a flathead screwdriver. To apply the cover from the bottom of the RC. Which is very easy to do, no difficulty. I checked and perfect. In the next step, I will remove the four set screws. There is a change here. The previous version of RC was a Phillips screw, but now they changed it to a hexagonal screw to fix it, which is hard for me. My tools are many, I found a hex key. Perfect, we took it apart. This one is a complete phone holder accessory that I want to replace. Next, I'm going to remove the circuit board layer because the interface for the antenna is on the back of it. We will disconnect the power and the data cables first. A total of three sockets need to be unplugged. The next step is to unscrew its retaining screws. There are five of them. We will need a T6 star screwdriver. Well, all unscrewed. Next, I took the board layer out. Yes, exactly. Here's the other half of the disassembled remote. In turn, we can see that there are two antenna IPX interfaces. Let's unplug the IPX interface first. There are two in total. However, here it is secured with hot glue. Let's find a way to remove it with tweezers first. Okay, just pick it up slowly like this. In order to be able to restore the antenna later, we try not to damage these feeders, otherwise, it will no longer be available in the future. These are coaxial feed lines, and the outer layer of the wire is the shield, and if the shield is damaged, the signal will be lost. I did it. Okay, I unplug the two IPX connectors. There's still a bit of glue here. Let me take that off. Great, I got it, so I can take it off completely. This is its stock antenna and the foam holder parts. So let's disassemble a Lintux adapter of a 300 tablet holder. Cut it open with a knife. Well, that's it. I will show you right away. This is it. Looks good and high quality. We can compare it with the original one, that's it. Their base mechanism is basically the same.
OK, let's start assembling them. First bring the third layer of the circuit board. We started putting it together. Let's start by threading the two feeder wires through this hole. Then, insert and secure the IPX into the base. Here, special care must be taken. Is the IPX interface truly unbreakable? After securing it, rotate it slightly. When repairing the IPX, take care not to bend all of the feeders too far. Hard bends will damage the protective layer of the inner coaxial cable, causing signal leakage and the signal strength to be weakened. Now that the IPX is connected, we'll reinstall the board on the remote space, find a suitable location, and avoid pinching the wires. I was able to retrieve the black 5 star screws and secure them with a T6 star screwdriver. After we have secured the screws, we will install the A300 tablet holder. There are four hex socket screws in this location. We pinned it back as well and try to fasten it as much as possible. Okay, finished. It's time to reclaim the RC. We must now align these feeders. At this point, I have plugged the power and the data cables back in. Because there is a lot of lubricating oil in this box, I recommend wiping it down with paper first. The feeder should then be secured with adhesive tape. Check that the upper cover does not crush the feeder wires. It is critical, I repeat, to organize the feeder wires so that they are not pinched by the cover and cause signal attenuation, but it may also cause the remote control switch to fail. We can cover this transparent cover once we've figured out how to arrange the feeders.
Check again to see if the thread is pinned down. I've made certain that no wires are being pinched. We can turn the screws now that the cover is in place. Tighten the screw as much as possible after repeatedly confirming that the feeder is not pressed. We can now check that the power switch is working properly. It can be turned on and off. Check again for pinched feeder wires, then further check whether the screws are locked. OK, we can put the second floor cover back on. After confirming that the bayonet is fastened, check whether the power switch works again. After making sure it's all set, we can shut it down. Are there any other buttons that feel the right touch? Great, now tighten the cover screws. There are 10 star screws in total. I screwed them both back with a T6 star screwdriver. Well, finally fully screwed back. Now, we can put the cover on before snapping it on. Let's double check that the keys feel right. Okay, no problem, everything is perfect. Let me buckle it up. Okay, done. Then buckle the rubber handles on both sides. Before snapping it on, we check whether its bayonet is deformed or broken. If there is deformation, we should use tools to adjust it. If it is broken, I recommend repairing it with plastic repair glue. We were lucky and didn't have any mount damage. We can buckle them up with confidence. When buckling it on, we also need to make sure that all the buckles are aligned with the card slots. Only use force to buckle, otherwise it is easy to cause deformation of the buckle. This doesn't require a lot of force on your part, and when you hear the click sound, it's stuck. Okay, let's do the other side, the same way. After all the snaps are stuck, we check the gaps of all the edges and firmly fasten all the edges again and make the gap disappear. Amazing! Congratulations! We finally completed all the steps and have upgraded it to a professional RC with tablet holder. Let me show you how awesome it is. It's still compact, flawless, and high quality. This Alien Tech tablet holder can be folded. There is a button on the left side. You need to press it to unfold the stand. 
We check one last time that the switch works. Awesome. Now I will show how to install Alintech DOOII Antenna Booster. Its interface is quick installation mode. You just need to plug and play. Antenna can be rotated angle. I also have a max size iPad Pro Max here. Let me show you what it looks like with a super big screen installed. This is a new generation of remote control assistance system, specially developed by Alien Tech team for users of Autel Light. And now no, I believe this is what you need. Professional equipment for professional flying. It not only improves the ability to control the details of the flight, but also improves the flight safety in high interference areas, effectively extending the flight distance exponentially, make the flight the control more smooth, and the image transmission clearer come on upgrade your equipment. Thank you for watching. See you next time.